Welcome to your lab skills video. This video will contain all the information you need to know to pass your lab skills quiz. This is how to measure and record mass. To do this, to weigh this, we're going to need two things. We're going to need a weighing paper and a, and a paper to record your data. And also, you're going to need a scale. Alright, the next step, what you're going to need to do is make sure your scale set on zero. As you can see, there's nothing on here, but it's set at .02 grams. So if you hit the zero button, it, re it rebalances. Alright, the next thing you're going to need to do is have your weighing paper increase it from the corner, like so. And we'll, we'll explain why you do this in a minute. Now what you're going to do is set this on the scale, wait for it to record, and this is your initial mass which you're going to write down on your recording paper. Alright, so let's say we need 3 grams. So what we're going to do is take our initial mass, which on here is 1.67 grams, and add 3 to that to make 4.67. Right, so here's what I'm going to do. Pour it out little by little. Stop incrementally. Remember, our, our magic number is 4.67. There we go. That's perfect. So what we're going to do now is record our final mass, which just in this case happens to be 4.66. So, final mass. And that number again is 4.66 grams. Alright, now to get our actual mass, all we have to do is minus the final mass from the initial mass. Which in this case is going to be 2.99 grams. Which is not exactly 3, but it's close enough. So now we're going to explain why we put this crease in our weighing paper. So what you're going to do is after you weigh it and have all your information down, you're going to lift it up. And let's say, oh, you need to put it in, in this handy dandy beaker. Well, it, this crease makes it ten times easier to pour. And there you go, no spillage. And that's how we record mass, like a boss. Alright, so now we're going to talk about measuring. So as an example, let's measure this pencil. As you can see, it looks about 14.7 mill or centimeters. Well, we don't know for sure. It, it could be 14.8. So what we're going to do is we're going to round the last digit. We're going to guess. And to me, this looks like 14.78. 14.78 centimeters. Anytime there are graduations or marking on a, on a measuring instrument, we always want to estimate one digit past the graduations. What does that mean? Well, we want to be as close as we can when measuring something. So by estimating this, our, our calculations can be more accurate. So in this case, we see that 14.7 centimeters is roughly what it is. But since it only goes to millimeters, we want to go one digit past that, so we want to make it 14.78. And that increases our estimation accuracy. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how to measure liquid using a graduated cylinder. Rule number one of measuring. You do never, not ever, ever, ever pick it up and try and look at it like this. You have to set it down on a flat surface and get down to eye level. If you're not at eye level, your measurements will be wrong. Okay, so why do I say this? Why do I say not never to pick it up? Now why do I say never, ever, ever? Well, here's why. If you're standing here like this, trying to read it, or you're sitting down here trying to read it, your measurements are going to be wrong. If you're at eye level, right here, you will see it straight through and you will get the proper measurement. So you want John's amazing tips? Well, check this out. As you're reading your graduated cylinder, there's a really cool tip, trick you can do. You can put a piece of paper behind it, on the very back side and it will help you read. So when we measure using a graduated cylinder, um, we have to look for the bottom of, of the meniscus. Water isn't flat, there's a small bubble to it, it bubbles down. So we have to find that bubble where it bubbles down on the bottom of the meniscus. Here it's just below 93 milliliters. Also we have to make sure that we estimate. So. If we're estimating here, it would be 92.8 milliliters from the bottom of that meniscus. 
we always measure from the bottom of the meniscus, which in this case would be 92.8 milliliters. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. So when everything's all said and done, your data sheet paper should include all of the following. Notice you have your mass, initial mass, your final mass, and your actual mass to show how much you actually weighed. You record it on your data table, okay? Next, uh, we did the pencil, so we recorded our distance of the pencil, 14.78 centimeters. And last but not least, we have our volume of water, which was 92.8 milliliters. If you do not have all of this information, um, on your data table, you will not pass. In other words, you have to have every single thing you see here in order to pass the lab skills quiz. It's like this and like that and like this, Anna. It's like that and like this and like that, Anna. It's like this. So just chill to the next episode.